a round of applause. That was lovely. All right. At this point in time, I will welcome the head of school, Mrs. Movili. But before Mrs. Movili comes here, we have our guest of honor. He is a lecturer in the Department of History at the University of Zambia. He is also an editor of the Encyclopedia of Zambia names and the executive director of Pencilo Publishers. His name is Mr. C. Penda. A round of applause for our guest of honor. You're welcome, sir. Okay, right about now, I would invite our head of schools, Ms. Movili, to come and give us a speech. Thank you. A round of applause for Ms. Movili as she comes to the stage. Uh, the managing director, Mr. Folotia. Our guest of honor, Mr. Penda. Our PTA chairperson, Mr. Chibiliti. Our academic, uh, chief academic officer, Mr. Samuel Lungu. Our deputy head teacher, Mr. Mambwe, as he walks away there. Uh, our dear parents, dear teachers and uh, pupils, you're welcome. The graduation day of the class of 2022 is finally here. I would like to begin by addressing our dear parents. Dear parents and guardians, for the past seven years, for some of you, some of you it's 10 years, if your child started a school in a reception, so you did the three years for nursery, and then seven years for primary. We have pushed, checked homework, raced against the clock to be here in time with your child. You have been your child's key partner in the education journey. Your positive attitude towards learning has influenced and encouraged your child to achieve his or her best here at Woodford School Osaka. Thank you, dear parents, for your loving guidance, your partnership, the trust that you have in us, that we could prepare your child for the final uh, grade, uh, grade seven examination or the composite examination. The journey for the primary Education ends today. If this is your first child who is going to secondary school, you will find that there are additional expectations for you and your child. Students in secondary school are not, are not only taught by one teacher, but they have to be independent to study things on their own, more so than they are done in primary school. I have three further points of advice which I, would, which I hope you will be useful as your child begins secondary school. Dear parents, listen to your child. If you don't listen, please start doing that. If you don't listen to your child, start listening to your child. Aim to extend the time that you spend having conversation with your child. Remember, conversations are two-way. There is a time to share your values and hear your child's opinions too. It is also time to build your child's confidence. So many parents have no idea about their daily stresses and worries that their children are experiencing. Dear parents, I'm sure you agree with me, the times that um, some of you that are my age and uh, some of you not so young or not so old, our times are different our children are more exposed than we were. They've got stresses that we never had. Please listen to them. Talk to them. Find time to have conversations with your child. And like I've said, a conversation is a two-way traffic. You listen, you talk, the child listens, and allow the child to talk. Number two, please increase your child's independence and responsibilities. Transition to secondary school is an ideal time to introduce your child to the self-working working of the washing machine, the making of simple meals, and prepare complete and proper completion of appropriate chores. These are essential life skills and praise for a job well done who boost your child's self-esteem. This is also a great opportunity to reinforce time management skills. Dear parents, be close to your child. Many parents make huge mistakes by letting go of their children at this age. My advice is that the opposite must happen. 
This is the time to get close to your child. Remember that they're just entering their, their preteen, so there'll be a lot of um, different things going on with them. So this is the time for you to get close to your child. If your child is going to Ashford, Ashford is a boarding school. Your child will need uh, to be independent for them to do some of their things on their own. So uh, you've got a chance there to take your child to Ashford Academy. It is um, in uh, six miles. Your child will be more independent. So don't just uh, keep your child at home. Take your child to a boarding school. Ashford is the ideal school. Now I'm addressing my students. I'm saying my students because you always be my students. Even when I meet you 15 years from now, you still be my students. Now I'm addressing you. Graduating class of 2022, for all that your parents have done for you this far, I would like you to say a big thank you by giving them an air clap. An air clap? Thank you, dear parents, for all the love, the dedication, the devotion that you have given to our children. I'll come back to you. Uh, teachers, the teachers that have been uh, with, uh, with these children, some of these children seated here, started uh, school at, at Woodford School, Lusaka, in 20, 2014. And they have been through teachers from early years up to grade seven. So almost all of us have taught them. So the teachers, your years of planning, teaching, marking, encouraging, and explaining things to these little friends that have come to, to this stage, how proud you must be to see your students here today. You may not real, uh, realize, but you have touched the lives of these young people forever. Through difficult changing times in education, remember when we did online, and so on and so forth, you have adapted, evolved, and ensured that every child has developed and, and achieved to the best of their ability. As teachers, you know that a child's performance at grade seven does not determine who or what they'll become in life. Seated here with us today, we could have doctors, engineers, teachers, even the future president may be amongst them. Children, for the teachers who have done all this for you, please say thank you with an A clap. Hmm, I think that's not enough. Can we, can we, we can do it better than that. Thank you, much better. Now I'm back to you, uh, my students. Every end uh, students as a beginning, today marks the end of your first phase of education. You have not finished school, John Bright. You have not finished school. <laughs> this does not mean that uh, this is the end for you. The next phase of learning that you enter into next year is secondary school. Secondary school actually will be a whole new scope of learning. In primary school, basically, we were holding your hands. We were talking to you all the time, every day, walking straight lines, walk one behind the other, no fighting, no pushing. Can you do your homework? Boys and girls, secondary school is totally different. As you gather here today, on the cliff of your future, it's not a distant reality anymore. It begins here. It begins today. Most of you began school at Woodford School, Lusaka, as toddlers. I was looking at your pictures. I saw Musapila as a very young baby. I saw uh, Joy Josiah. I saw Jaden. I was like, wow, these were, <laughs> they started early. So you started here as toddlers, uh, boys and girls. You have completed a basic education that will save you as the platform which you use to launch yourselves into the next phase of educational journey. Some of you will go into boarding school, like I said. Some of you, I know you're going to Ashford. Some of you will go to Rotsburg. But I hope most of you will go to, I want you to experience boarding school. Dear parents, take them to, to boarding school. They need to be independent. 
So some of you go into boarding school, boys and girls, while others will continue to be desk scholars. But each of you, you travel your own path. No matter where you go or what you do, there are challenges ahead of you. There are challenges ahead of you. What I'm asking from each of you is to meet these challenges straight on with your head held high and your heart wide open. It's not enough to simply try to get by in life. It's not enough just to get by. Don't make an effort. Reach for those goals. In life, it's not the effort that is rewarded, it's the goals. You want to see the results. So it's not enough that you just get by. That doesn't move the world forward, boys and girls. Effort doesn't move the world forward. You must try to excel in everything you do. Strive for excellence in every task, large and small. Although it not be easy to see, every accomplishment you achieve is added to the world's accomplishments. Your individual success benefits society as a whole because when you succeed, you lighten the burden of your fellow man. When you succeed, you're in a position to give rather than take. Imagine if every individual lived up to his or her own potential. What a great world that we have. Think about how amazing that would be and how much, how much better off the world would be. Now imagine if, you just, if just half of you lived up to your potential, the world would still be an awesome place. Even if a quarter of you work to make your, your life successful, you could still make amazing contributions to society. Well, you may not have the power to inspire the whole world to strive for success, but you do have the power to try to achieve it for yourselves. My challenge to each one of you boys and girls is to do that, is to do all that you can do to reach your full potential. Each one of you, 30, 36 seated here, graduating today, is able to do that. If you're able to do that, just imagine the effect that we would have on Zambia, Africa, and the whole world. The future is truly in your hands, so make the most of it. Indeed, success is measured through consistency. We've been consistent with you. We have made you study consistently. Don't give up. Don't lose that. Boys and girls, I wish you all the best in everything that you do. I wish you all the best as you go to secondary school. I wish you all the best as you graduate from Ashford and, and Brownspark and go into university, the one that we are opening soon. <laughs> yes, we are, dear parents. <laughs> so boys and girls, all the best. And uh, we'll be seeing you. Thank you so much. Before I take my seat, before I take my seat, I would want to welcome our managing director, Mr. Polotia, to come and give us his speech. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so glad to see everyone here, and I hope everybody is enjoying themselves. Are you guys, there was a question earlier, are you current grade sevens or outgoing grade sevens? Outgoing, ain't? Many of you have been with us for so many years, and Woodford School is the only school you've actually ever known. Um, as Mrs. Mubidi was saying, you are now going into the secondary, and things will be quite different. But there will be so much more advice coming, including from our esteemed guest of honor, who will be speaking shortly, as well as from our PTA chair, Mr. Chibiriti. This event is, is one of the happiest days that I have every year, because I always come and speak at these events. So it's like you've been with people for such a long time, and then the job is kind of done. And a few weeks ago, uh, mid-September, I did the one for Rhodes Park grade 12s. And that reminds me of how we got here in the sense that the grade 12 levers function was kind of made by the Rhodes Park grade 12s a long time ago. They started having a secret party somewhere. And then we started hearing about it as management, and then they didn't want us to get involved, because you know how management is, right? 
And then over the years, we tried to formalize it and say, look, if people have been with us and anything that is bearing our name, we need to be involved. So we started having a simple lunch um, for them just before they did the exams. And then when we created um, Woodford School and we had our first grade sevens, it was only fitting that we would have a similar function um, as well for the grade sevens. Mr. Malasha was just reminding me about the first uh, Woodford grade seven. Um, Mr. Chibiriti, you also remember? It was small, eh? There were like 10, 12, the first grade sevens that uh, came out of Woodford. And now every year we have two classes of around about uh, 36. So we have these traditions and we are pleased to have these traditions. You heard Mrs. Mubidi talking about Ashford. Ashford is our new school, but before I, I get into that, what I really primarily always want to do is to talk about what we do as private schools. So our history, uh, my family in these schools is very long. Way back in 1973, I went to a school that my father had just bought, Rhodes Park School, Joseph Miller Road. And I, I have very few memories, because obviously it was a long, 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 long time ago. But I've grown up with the concept that our family is engaged and involved with Rhodes Park School. When I was finishing my grade 12, dad would say, Iwe, today, no more watching TV, let's go. And I remember pretending to teach a class of grade ones at, at some point. Because at the time, they didn't know what to do with me. But over time, they were just trying to teach me about the business. 1993, when my brothers and I, sisters and I took over, we were able to be able to continue the journey that the late parents had started. And then 20 years later, 19, 2013, is when we created Woodford. So private schooling is in, our, is in our DNA. And what we try to do is to create a proposition that people are giving us their most valued possession, and they're trying to give them as best a foundation as we can. So we do things like making sure pedagogically, to use such a long word, that we teach them the things they're supposed to be taught according to the curriculum or the syllabus. Um, we give them sports, we give them the arts and drama, and we give them a lot of exposure to as many things as possible. And that is our value proposition as the Rhodes Park Schools Group. Woodford School Osaka has been very successful as a school, and that has been very much because of the support that we've had. Support from people who, at one point, they start out as your customers. Next thing, they're your friends. So like those two gentlemen in the corner there, I don't know what to call them. We've been together for a very, very long time. Mr. Malasha, Mr. Chibiriti, who heard about a a new school in Kablonga where Lake Road used to be, and they came and they brought us their children, and we are here all this way. Thank you, guys. There are also many other f um, friends, I'll call them, in the, in the audience, people that I've known over time, over the years that you've had their children here. Abena Matui, sorry, I can't see you. Ah, hi. Uh, there's, okay, I'm looking for faces, and if I say the wrong face, it will be an issue. Ah, there you are. You're hiding behind the flower. You were Oxford Ignatius now, who are you? Yeah, we know you. <clears throat> the Mubukwanus have also been with us uh, for quite some time, and we're very proud to have them as one of our families. Keeping a child in a private school is not easy. Um, it involves a lot of sacrifice. The first one, obviously, is paying the fees. The fees is the fees is the fees. I never get involved with Vyama fees, right? There's a group of people that get involved with the fees. It's a private school. We basically have to, that's the income that we get. And we've become quite effective at having that fees component of our relationship done. That's how it is, in order to keep the lights on and to keep things moving. Keeping a child in a private school also involves, as Mrs. Mubidi was saying, a lot of time commitment. 
Some of you have done homework that you've never seen before in your life. The type of things that the children have brought to you and says, Mommy, what's this? And all of this. We've all done it. And they are here today because of the commitment that you, that you as the parents and guardians have done. There's been things like getting them here on time, making sure that they're here on time, picked up on time. Being a parent at a private school like Woodford, it's quite a journey. Mrs. Nzima? It is. And every few days you get an email. Your child has been selected for the shen, shen, shen. And the first thing you look at the calendar is like, oh, but that day I have a meeting. The report is in due that week. But manawen. And you know what? You just make a plan, isn't it? I'll talk about Woodford itself. Having started in 2013, next year it will be clocking its 10th anniversary. 10 years. When we started this place, it was quite a vision and a dream. And we are so blessed that we've been able to have the capacity to actually make it work to this stage. But as all of you are aware, we will need to be leaving this place very soon. It's not like we don't like this place. We love this place. It's a wonderful place historically. The bishop's place. Did you guys know that Mrs. Muviri's office was once a chapel? It's holy ground. <clears throat> but as the business has grown and the costs have gone up, the landlords themselves have got other plans for what they want to do with this place. And right now, we are looking at the cost of rent, which has gone quite high. And we've found our own place. All of you know it. It's in uh, Ibex. And that's where we've already started the construction. We started the construction. We bought it in 2018, should I say. 2019, we started. 2020, we were all told by the Minister of Health to go and hide. And things got very difficult, so everything slowed down. Uh, late 20-ish, 21, we were able to have our construction of our sports facilities there and have the sports day there. And this year, in May, we broke ground for the first classroom blocks that we'll be doing. So as I stand here before you, Ninkwata pressure. The pressure is I've got to pay the rent here, I've got to pay FNB for the bank loan, thank you very much FNB, and we've got to keep the construction going because come this time next year we will be going so that in January of 24 we open at the new campus. That is the pressure. <clears throat> So for some of you who still have your children with us, they will actually be able to join us there at that side. Um, the new campus itself is, of course, going to be, to use the word, more better than this one uh, in terms of the size of the rooms, in terms of uh, the facilities, the libraries, the computers. Over time, when we finish up, there will be things like the swimming pool and all those things. But right now, we literally have to take everything that we have here and take it and start all over again the other side. Um, so far, it's going well, and we've had a lot of experience of building school campuses. And with the support that we keep getting uh, from yourselves as the parents, we'll definitely make it. Um, I must also mention the, the teachers. Mrs. Movidi thanked them, and the children gave them what could be your very last A clap of your life, eh? <laughs> the teachers um, have been teaching these children from literally reception, uh, reception two, all the way through and up to this point. One of our strategies in the Rhodes Park Schools group is we don't always glorify and sort of make a big deal about the exam class teachers. That's the grade seven, the grade nine, and the grade twelves. Because, basically, a child who's sitting for a grade 7 exam, a grade 9 exam, a grade 12, has been through previous school. There was somebody in nursery who taught them the difference between red and blue. There was somebody, you know, who taught them 2 plus 3 equals 6, right? Thank you, you're there. <clears throat> 
So all of the fundamentals there. So we always like to um, take uh, cognizance and appreciate the whole entire uh, teaching crew that, has, that brings the children all the way rather than actually just having one um, group of people. Quick word on what happens next. Rhodes Park Schools Group has got three schools now. We've got Rhodes Park, where we started from. We've got Woodford School Osaka, which does nursery up to grade 12, up to grade 7, sorry. And now, this year, January, we opened a boarding school called Ashford. Uh, many of you have heard of it. We've been pushing the marketing uh, for it. Um, one thing I've learned from Trade Kings is that when you're selling something, Takwa Sony. That's how it is. So bottom line is that we've been looking at our service and saying we can take a child from nursery and we can take them up to grade 12. And by adding this new service, we'll be able to add the boarding component. Um, there's boarding there and there's also day for especially those who live in this area. And we've actually had one particular family that has been at Rhodes Park, uh, at Woodford, sorry, they finished grade seven, they came to Rhodes Park, and now they're the ones who started Ashford. At Ashford, if you are considering boarding schools um, for your child, it will basically be the same level of standard and service and the same commitment that we have as a Rhodes Park group um, to, 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 as what we offer there. So when we got there last year, when we started doing the renovations of the former school that was there, we had to look very carefully at saying, okay, Matenga Mwana, Mamchosa Pa Rhodes Park, Pa Woodford, Mampedeka Kuno. There's a certain level they are used to in terms of the classroom, the chair, the ventilation, the toilet, the bathroom, everything. And we had to, be, and the computers, all of those things, and we basically had to continue that. So we are looking more forward to more support from most of our Rose Parks group, group parents as we now spread our offering as much as we can. Um, thanks again, all the parents, for all the, the support and the business that we've had over the years. For those of you who were offended, we are sorry. And we really hope that for those who still have their children, we'll continue to be together as we keep growing uh, Woodford School Osaka together. Thank you very much. I will now call upon our, our teacher, Mr. Shvilitu, to give his speech. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm a lawyer myself, so I don't uh, say much. Um, I'll start by just uh, thanking everyone for making it here. Uh, this is a very glamorous occasion for all of us, and I'm very happy to see our pupils graduating today. And just like uh, Mr. Folotia was saying, the transition for Woodford School has been an amazing one for most of us that have been with this school. Like for us, we've been with this school almost now nine years. I was just saying that um, the growth and progress of Woodford School has been incredible. Um, just to state that uh, just the other day I was having um, an address with our graduates today and just before their exam, which should have been on Tuesday. And um, to have seen a number of them run around the school for the last one year and uh, talking to them the other day and understanding that very soon you'll be leaving us was actually a very sad feeling for me. And even more sad it is today because uh, the excellence of your children and our children has been amazing. And I know that we shall dearly miss you. But what you do carry with yourselves for us is that you must carry the message that Woodford schools and Rotspark schools, should I say, produce the best students in the country. So you have to continue being a shining example in everything that you do. Like Ms. Mobili was saying, this is not the end of the road. It's actually just starting for most of you. And like I did tell you the other day on Tuesday that the most important thing you must have in life is just the belief in yourself. Don't let anyone put you down. I know you're going to go to different schools. I know that uh, Mr. Falotia wants you to go to Ashford. Uh, but wherever you're going to go, you must have the self-belief that you can achieve and excel. 
Uh, for us, we're going to send you with our farewells and our God's blessings. And I trust that those that are coming after you will do the very best in the academic performances. You won't let us down because Woodford has shown that year in, year out, we produce 100%. Mrs. Mobili, well done. Uh, and we know for sure that even you guys, from the excitement you were showing just a few minutes ago, that excitement will also show, also show towards your parents in your results. And I want to thank everybody else, dear parents, not to hold you much, but I'm very grateful for this moment, and I'm very, very proud to be part of this school. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chiwilite. I will now call upon our guest of honor, Mr. Chanda Penda. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and our graduates. To the MD, I acknowledge the MD of uh, Rhodes Park uh, Schools Group, the Chief Academic Affairs Officer, uh, the Head Teacher of uh, Woodford School, the PTA Chairperson and uh, the PTA Board Members, uh, to the teachers of Woodford School Lusaka, the parents and graduating students. Thank you for inviting me to speak today during the 60th Grade 7 graduation. I'm honored to be here uh, to join you in celebrating this wonderful occasion. First of all, congratulations to all the students who are graduating today. Congratulations to all the parents, the guardians who have supported these graduates up to this point, and congratulations to the teachers and to the students. Would you kindly give yourselves another A club So uh, to the graduates, I would just urge you to adopt three skills that will help you in the next phase of life. When I look at you, I rem I am reminded of myself in your position uh, in 1999 in the Copper Belt province. Um, I remember I left behind a, left co a less competitive environment to a more competitive secondary school environment. Um, and I remember that one day when I sat in, in the math class, we had one of our classmates and we were learning simultaneous equations, those long equations, that to solve one problem you have to fill the entire board. One of my classmates, my new classmates, had to solve the whole equation just in his head before we, we had to write it down and start solving the rest of the class, and he shouted out the answer. And eventually, he ended up getting 100% in math in the final grade nine exams. So I identified such uh, friends in school and befriended them, and I asked them to, to teach me in their areas of, of strength and myself, I taught them in my areas of strength. So whichever challenge that you will find, it may not be academically. In other areas, you should identify friends of yours, the ones that you are coming away uh, with, rather from the school, into your new school environment, whether it's Ashford or another uh, school, and work with them. You know, adapt yourself. Things will sometimes not work according to your plan. You will fail, you'll be disappointed, you'll face setbacks. The, ski, see, skill, the key skill that will allow you to excel is in, in all this is the ability to adapt to change because certainly you'll find the change. The other skill is resilience. I'll urge you to be resilient because one sure thing about life is that through tough times, those tough times will always come, you, you are moving out of what has been your comfort zone. For the last few years up to now, as a graduate, you leave your comfort zone behind, venturing into a new environment, which you barely know. You will be introduced to new environments, new subjects, new teachers, and new friends. And since you are older, the demands placed on you in 
secondary school will also be higher. You might initially find secondary school intimidating, confusing in such a situation. Uh, for you to succeed, you need to be resilient. Resilience is your ability to withstand difficulties, to bounce back and to grow despite life's challenges. Being resilient does not mean that you will not face challenges. Rather, it means that you should be able to deal with difficult situations. Despite the major challenges that I faced in my new secondary school environment, I remember that working closely with friends who, who were better than me, I ended up being one of the most out outstanding students at Ronantelo Secondary School. The other, uh, the other skill that you need to learn is to be nice. Okay? Life is not all about work, work being the most brilliant, but the relationships that you build in the school environment, be, with, be it with the, with the teachers, with your fellow students, are the most important and actually are uh, lifelong relationships. In a world in, uh, full of hatred, uh, we need more people who are nice, okay? people who are able to stop and give the egg clap for each other. As I end my speech, let me state like that in life doesn't usually, uh, usually follow the plans that you lay out for yourself. You all experience highs and lows in life, the difficulty and the easy, and unfortunately, there may be sometimes too difficult difficulties and just not, uh, life is just not smooth sailing in short. As you graduate from your primary school and move to secondary school, Remember that your time at Woodford, remember your time at Woodford School and be resilient and uh, be resolute about your future. Thank you so much and wishing you all the best. Okay, thank you very much for those speeches. I hope we have gotten one or two things at this point in time. Uh, we're going to present the certificates to the graduates. So I'll invite the high table to come up front as we present the certificates to the graduates. Thank you. And now the first recipient of a certificate is Elena, who is, um, or rather, uh, who has been at Woodford for some, quite some time now, and she is a confident learner who faces situations the way they come, and she's always ready to take up challenges. She is no other than Laila Handia. Okay, our second participant is someone who is a hard worker. I know her not to be a type of person who quits, and this is no other than Vesa Makasa. Our third participant, someone who is always happy, as I know her. And well, I have a lot of things to talk about. This is no other than Mtale Kaunda. The next participant, very jovial. This is no other than Shakaina Kangwa. Okay. 
And now we have Elena who has uh, most of the times challenged me during our lessons, asking a lot of questions. Of course, um, these questions are those that added meaning to the lessons. And she has always been doing well in all academic um, circles. Azaria Osman. Our next participant. Uh, this learner is involved in almost all the activities. And well, she likes to be the favorite. So she always tells me to say, teacher, can I be your favorite student? So she's tried bribing me, but then I think uh, maybe it will work now that she's leaving. This is no other than Sipesile Zima. I have a friend who at first, um, she was telling me it was almost impossible to get along in the subject. Um, but later on, she told me herself, she told me, I think social studies is a, a, it's, it's a subject I can manage. And her performance since then has been good. She is no other than Teresa Piri. We have the next graduate who doesn't um, like challenge, challenges from others, meaning she would always want uh, you know, to be at the top. And she's very much careful in whatever she does. She fears making mistakes. And that has helped her excel in our academic uh, journey. Lorraine Habada. The next participant, I'll call him Mr. President. <laughs> I'm sure the grade seven know who I'm talking about. But uh, in my classes, he always wants to know what Max has gotten and he wants to know if he's right or wrong, even before he can write an answer. So this is no other than Mwewa, Mwewa Kambobe. Okay, thank you. I've, always, oh, I've also been asked at some point, teacher, am I your favorite student? And uh, have our challenges to respond to, to that question. We have gone, uh, we have uh, uh, been together, and we have enjoyed memories together with this learner, like any other child, Mukwesileu. Okay, the next participant. I'm sure she was angry with me because sometimes I used to switch their names with another learner. But then in class, she's hardworking and she always uh, puts in her best in everything she does. This is no other than Kutemwa Mwale. The next graduate is a visionary uh, learner who is always ready to face challenges as they come. And she asks a lot of questions to the extent where the lesson is already done, it's over, but he will still follow you because he's, he has that mind to say, I need to get everything uh, cleared before I go um, uh, away from this lesson. Mwengwe Nkamba. The next learner is an example of perseverance 
And whenever you meet this learner, she will always greet you, which is lovely. This is no other than Temwani Hapeza. I have a friend from Western Province, and we used to um, pull each other during the classes. I, at some point, she used to read materials that are way above her age, and I advised her to say, this is going to disturb you. She was like, but uh, it's good to, to have vast knowledge about this thing. I said, no, come on. Uh, you, ha you are about to write your exams and you need to stick to the uh, syllabus and the level at, at which you are at. And this person is no other than who? <laughs> they are right. Ntanda <laughs> Mubukwan. Uh, this one is difficult to get a smile from her, ever serious, and always dedicated to uh, whatever she's doing. Just getting a smile. I can count the times I got a smile from her. Do you know who she is? Lenganji Silumbe. Okay, our next letter, seemingly quiet, but has some activity. And of course, he puts his mind to what he does with a little push. This is no other than Musapila Sinyangwe. I remember one day we were coming back from Fuwe where we went for a camp and uh, this man can speak Bemba. He can speak Bemba. <laughs> Musapira, we'll miss you. Very much. Okay, this learner. Oh. When this one stands up, I think he's taller than me. <laughs> and I like him seated. <laughs> okay? But he's one person that would do your work as well as talk. But still more, he'll do your work. This is no other than John Bright. Okay, our next participant or graduant, I would say the same, but I like his cooperation. I like how dedicated he is in class. And mostly, I like the fact that he's able to do work when he's taught to do so. This is none other than Aiden Matui. Our next on the list, um, she is very dedicated and uh, she's one person who likes monitoring her academic development 
whenever there is an, an assignment or an assessment given to them, she will ensure that before you are ready to give them um, the results, she will come and ask, what did I get? And later, after you have told her, she will ask you, how can I improve these results? That helped her to excel, to excel in her uh, academic journey. Siva Jene Chikwanda. Next on the list is a person who always finishes work first. He's ever dedicated, even before he can do anything else, he'll first do your work, then he can start talking. But anyway, I like the fact that he's so dedicated. This is no other than Tizifa Chiwale Mwanza. Thank you. We have another um, interesting uh, learner who also um, ensures that whatever she does, it is the best um, of all. She also she is also one of the learners who want to be top um, in class, meaning she does everything perfectly so that when the results come out, she is on uh, top on the list. Jemima Chama. <laughs> Next on the list is someone who's ever quiet in class, but then is hardworking. One funny fact is that um, I was taught by the mother, and now I'm teaching the child. This is no other than Wandita. Uh, this crop of uh, great sevens is quite interesting because there was competition. Another one who liked uh, to be in the race whenever there was competition and ensured that whatever he does is done according to the instructions given was um, one learner who was very good at following instructions and did um, everything according to the instructions given. This is no other than Chomba Mumba. He was always seated in front so that he can get instructions correctly. If you remember, I said someone asked me to say, why should I learn about former presidents of Zambia? Interesting question. But on the way, I learned a lot from her. But up to now, I only remember one simple statement. Namaste. Ria Rajiv. Next on the list is one of the most dedicated students. She do your work. She's very hardworking. I really admire the energy. This is none other than Smauki Mulasukwanda. I do not want to be accused, so I will introduce them at the same time. The same way they look alike, their behaviors and performance is almost identical. I like one fact that they ask a lot of questions. And uh, at the beginning, at least there was an issue of them fearing to make mistakes 
But at, as we went on, they couldn't fear that anymore. So when they made mistakes, we corrected them, and they got um, uh, to like school, and their performance improved as well. Tameka and Tamisha. I hope I was right when I said they look alike. Next on the list is one person who is quiet in class, but a dedicated learner. This is no other than Jaden Sakala. Uh, the next person uh, we're calling upon is also one learner who has uh, shown her strength in academic journey. She started by having a little bit of some challenges, but before we knew it, she was one of the most um, reliable and confident learners in class, Joy Josiah Malasha. Okay, next on the list, he's one person who would ask you to go to the point. I like his hard work, and uh, I admire the fact that he doesn't give up. And may this continue even where you go. This is no other than Ethan Mumba. Next on the list, also, we'll start by asking what others have gotten in class before he asks what he has gotten in class. So, meaning, he wanted to know if he is the one up there. And he always made sure that he knows who is competing with him for him to know how to strike next time. Kawanda Lilanda. Next on the list is someone who would question your question sometimes. He would make you think, and sometimes he would make you research. This is no other than Joshua Chasimpa. Okay, the next on the list is uh, a quiet boy, seemingly quiet, but when he is with his friends, especially one friend, then you can see that he is not as quiet as you thought he is. His name? Kondwa <laughs> Marirwe. He is another person very inquisitive and uh, also he would move with his uh, past papers following you wherever you are as long as he wants to get uh, clarity and ensure that he gets the help that he, he wants to get at that particular time. This helped him to excel. He was almost in grade 5, 6, he was almost at the bottom but now, as we talk, they are almost at the same time in class. He has gotten even several awards because of his uh, hard work. Chipego Nkolola. Next on the list, ha, this one, is an example of someone who is focused. I love how she puts her mind to work. This is no other than Wankumbu Namonje. Yeah, 
Last no, but not the least. Last but not the least is someone's friend. When they are together, they chat a lot. His performance in class is something you can um, all admire. At least we have seen him uh, grow both physically and uh, mentally. Mulotwe Nikisi. Okay, that was the main event for the day. And really, these guys have reached somewhere, but they're still going somewhere. So it doesn't mean you've, you've finished school, but I'd like the parents just to give them a round of applause, just to congratulate our graduates. Thank you very much. So we come to the end of our presentation of certificates. We are now going to have a vote of thanks by Temwani Hapeza. A round of applause for Temwani. of honor, the managing director, Mr. Folotia, the chief academic officer, Mr. Lungu, the head teacher, Mrs. Mubidi, the PTHR person, Mr. Chiviliti. Parents and guardians, my fellow students, may I, please, may I simply say all protocols observed. I cannot be even begin to say how grateful we are for all that you have done for us these past years. You have been our second parent in our second home. Thank you for all the knowledge you have shared with us. Your, your patience and guidance are what has brought us here today. In this opportunity, we will like to apologize for our mischievous behaviors that we have done throughout our school years. When we were being rebellious, when we knew nothing but to complain, when we tried to make up excuses for not doing our homework. You never gave up on us. We are really grateful from our deepest heart. We promise to remember your advice and do you proud in whatever we do in the future. And for the parents who accompany us on this day, we thank you. Your presence in this ceremony and in our life is what we could call a blessing. To have amazing parents is everything we could ask for. Your support, both physically and emotionally, pushes us to be better and better. We are happy to be here, not only for the sake of our happiness. We are happy because today we can make you smile with pride to see us standing here and ready to tackle any challenges that may come upon us. My fellow grade sevens, time flies without us realizing it. Awkward smiles that turned into invaluable friendship. There were also many things, big and small, that we have gone through together, and I am sure that the memories will always be saved in our hearts. Someday, we will look back and smile, remembering all of our antiques in this school. But for now, let's enjoy our moment with an even bigger smile. I would also like to congratulate all of my friends who have graduated this year. These past three years, I know that they have not always been easy for us, but here we are, not about to pick the fruit of our hard efforts and struggles and be ready for a new challenge called junior high school. We are here not only because of our efforts alone, we are able to stand here with the help of people who love and genuinely care about us. For that, we say thank you. May God bless the entire management and staff of Woodford School for continued hard work of imparting valuable knowledge to every student that passes through this school. We shall meet again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Timani. Thank you very much, Grade 7 Class 2022. You were a good 
team to work with. You are cooperative. We know your children, so uh, your apologies are accepted. <laughs> Thank you very much for remembering to, to, to say that to us. You are very much uh, welcome uh, to um, ask for any other further guidance, even when you are gone from this school. You will continue being our learners. Dear parents, we are coming to the end of our event. My colleague has something to say. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, hope to, we hope you love everything that has been happening here. We thank you for your support. As teachers, we do not take it lightly that every day you have to sacrifice for these children and we assure you that where they are going, they have a bright future ahead of them. Continue encouraging them, continue being by their sides. This is just one of the first achievements. They still have a long way to go. So thank you very much from Woodford School teachers as well as everyone else. We want to say thank you to you parents and the servants, even as you go, please remember to always work hard and be at your best. Thank you. We have come to the end of our um, gathering here. May I invite Mr. Malasha to come and give us a closing prayer. To the Woodford management, the PTA council, the graduate and students, and the parents. First of all, before I make a prayer, I want to give a thanksgiving. And you know why after I do this. I don't know whether this was coincidence or planned, but my daughter, our daughter, Joy Josiah, was uh, due to write an exam on Tuesday. I did drop them together with a brother here on, on Tuesday. Apparently in the night she was not feeling too good. I went about my business, then she became worse to a point where she couldn't actually walk. She was actually being aided by some members of staff of Woodford and uh, Mr. Mwila uh, Chibiliti, the PTA chairman. They had to feed her. And all this, while all this was happening, I wasn't aware. So I received a call from Mr. Chulondika to say, Joy is not well. I said, no, she, she had a slight headache. What is the problem? He says, no, no, I think we're trying to stabilize her. Then another call came to say that, can we administer a panado to her? Now, the school was trying to manage me. Apparently, she couldn't even walk. This was in the morning. They're going into the exam room. She had to be aided by some of our friends and the teachers to actually go and write the exam. My whole day was spoiled. I had to rush back. When I picked her up here, I just saw her, I asked her how the exam was. She told me, oh, Papa, it was fine. But I could see she was just being strong for the father. Just there, I decided we are going straight to the hospital. Just went to pick up a medical card, took her to hospital. I explained to the doctor that she's actually in the process of writing an exam. The doctor just looked at her, the temperature was high. Her eyes were blood red. Her temperature was so high. Now, as a father, you know, you, I got so alerted. I mean, it, everything was going through my mind, but I had to be strong. The doctor said, if she has to wake up tomorrow, we have to immediately put under observation. So they administered uh, a drip, uh, two, one and a half drips to her. They put antibiotic, and she was sleeping for most of the time for about five hours. That's how I spent my Tuesday. So for that... I'm so thankful to the school management, the teachers, her, some of our friends, and the PTA for being there even when it, neither me or the mother was actually around. You know, words, I'm lost for words. I don't even know what to say. I really don't know what to say. Uh, it's a very emotional period. Yesterday, we, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mobili, in fact, the other day, called, should we bring the papers to the hospital? So she writes in the hospital. 
but the doctor had already done his work and, and I want to thank the doctors at that hospital. She was discharged that very day. When yesterday we were, Mrs. Mugiri called to say, can we bring the papers at home? I asked the mother, have you talked to her? What did she say? She says, no, she wants to write with her friends. So I had to ask her again, are you sure you want to write to your friends? The school can arrange somebody to come here. We won't be here, they'll invigilate. She says, no, I want to write with my friends. That's a bond of how close these children have come. So at this juncture, without belaboring the closing prayer, I want all the graduates to stand up. All of you guys, stand up. Most of these guys are my friends. We mix at parties and all. So I want all the parents to give a big round of applause to all these kids. You guys have made all of us proud, and we want you to make us even much prouder than we are right now at the end of five years. Mr. Matwi, agreed? Mr. Kambove, agreed? All right, you can take your seats. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day because this day was fashioned and ordained from the beginning of creation. You are the creator of all that we see and do not see. You, O oh God, are able to unscramble scrambled eggs. Father, we raise each and every child that is graduating today to your throne room. We pray that, Lord, you bring to fruition all the purposes that you have destined for them. May those purposes be called to bear in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that the blood of Jesus protects that destiny, even as they go into upper grades, grade 8 to 12, to university, to whatever else they will be going to achieve. Father, protect their destinies in the name of Jesus. From them we shall see the first billionaires. From them we shall see trillionaires. From them we shall see leaders that shall turn around this country, this continent, and this world. Mark their names, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. May they be leaders of transformation, each and every one of them. Lord, I want to thank you for the parents who have sacrificed so much in resource, in time, advice, counsel, even comfort. Father, replenish from where they've taken those resources in the name of Jesus. The minders and the teachers of God have been there since 2013, 14. Please, Lord, we pray that you increase them. Bless them, O oh God, and prosper them in all that they desire to do. May you bless the work of their hands for the work that they've planted in these, our children. The school management, the PTA, previous and current, Father, we pray that you protect them. May Woodford School prosper in the name of Jesus. With these few words, Lord, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.